Hey everybody, welcome back to Nerd News Today, and this time around we're taking a look at another Mezco 112 Collective action figure. And on deck today, Yojo, well, no, it's more like Cobra, la 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 la, well, that's the movie, no, but yeah, today we're talking about a member of Cobra, we're looking at Destro, the arms dealer for Cobra, and Destro is like such an iconic G.I. Joe character, and he looks great in toy form, there's really no denying it. No matter who's done a toy of Destro, no matter what format, no matter what size, it always looks great, unless it's the Christopher Eccleston version from the live action movie. As always with Mezco figures, this thing is loaded to the gills or the metallic helmet thingy with tons of accessories. We're going to get into that in a little bit here. But first things first, I want to talk about the packaging and this packaging is really cool. It is a throwback to the original figures of G.I. Joe with that great looking explosion behind the illustrated character. It's not the original, mind you. This is a, their own version of this look, but it's exactly what you'd expect from that old style of cartoon. Now one thing that I kind of don't like about the packaging, and I think this might just be a Mezco thing across the board, I kind of wish that it had a kind of window in the packaging, because for the most part all the Mezco figures are like this, they're just a rectangular box. I don't think, uh, as far as I can remember, any times I've reviewed other Mezco 112 figures, they don't really have like a window. And I, what I mean by that is like I wouldn't have minded like a door that opens to show you what's inside the figure. And that can just be like a simple magnetic door that would be really easy to do. Diamond's doing it with their mini mates. Uh, I know some other companies that are doing it, like Mythic Legions are doing that a lot more often now. It's a really great thing, especially for like higher end adult collectibles, to still give you a preview of what's inside the box while also maintaining this look, maintaining the visuals that you want to have, like this great artwork here. Uh, it's just something for me that I think as a collector I want to see, because I want to know what's in this box, I want to look at it before I buy it, and you can't really do that with this. Granted, the way that Mezco tends to work now is through pre-orders, and if you don't get it, you don't get it, that's that. It's really hard to see a lot of these things actually in stores, but for the people who do own comic stores and toy stores and do buy them to resell them, it would be cool to know what you're getting because you are paying a pretty hefty price for these figures. So that's all I really want to say about the packaging because it is what it is, but we already got our Destro here out in the open. And I gotta tell you guys, you know, if you're a regular on this channel, you know that recently I reviewed the 1989 Michael Keaton Batman figure that Mezco did for the 112 Collective series, and... I hated it. It wasn't good. It turned out to be a very controversial thing for me to say, but yeah, I didn't like that figure. It really didn't scratch the itch. It had a lot of flaws in my opinion, and it wasn't really a great look. Fast forward to now where we got the G.I. Joe line, and this is a lot more in what I feel like is the classic Mezco style. This is like the classic 112 look, and this time around, I think they nailed it. This is very much the iconic look and feel that you've gotten with all the other Mezco figures in the past from the series. So we're off to a really great start here. And again, lots of accessories. We're going to come back to that in a little bit. But first things first, let's talk about the likeness. And I think it's a great likeness for Destro. Now, not only do we have this one head here, it's currently on, and we have two additional heads for Destro. One of them with a little bit more of a similar sour disposition, and the other one with this really creepy grimace on his face that is just so weird to me also because it's like, Dude's wearing like a metal helmet or a metal mask, but he's got teeth. That's just, that's just unsettling to me. But the heads are great, the sculpts are good, it looks like the old toys, and it's got a really wonderful sheen to it. It has that, of course, very necessary metallic look. This isn't like the vac metalized look you had with the old G.I. Joe toys back in the day, but it still is a really great looking shine on this figure. Totally captures how Destro should look. And I want to mention too, the heads are very easy to pop on and off. No time at all to do that. They're great, wonderful heads, wonderful fit, easy for taking photos with them. Let's spend some time on the body now, uh, and I think the first thing really that's super noticeable about the body is the outfit. And this is what I mean when I say the classic Mezco look and feel, because this is the material that they've been using for years, and it's kind of like this, this sort of, I don't know what, really what to call it, but this, the Mezco signature fabric that's on these guys. It's very sheer, it clings to the figure, for better or for worse. I think with this outfit, and in general with the Mezco wardrobes, it's really a love-hate kind of thing. Either you love it or you hate it. I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. Uh, it's more that I've gotten used to it, I guess. Uh, I appreciate what they're doing, because it's cool having like real fabric on them, but it is so weird also. You know, I, I kind of personally prefer my, my figures, at least in the scale, maybe not necessarily to have this kind of feel, because to me, I think these outfits would be maybe not this material. I think that's what always is thrown off for me, is the fact that this material, it is what it is and it has to be this, it's a necessary material to fit the figure and not tear and rip apart, but um, I guess I wouldn't have minded it to be something a little, maybe more closer to like what's on his accents, it's a little more leathery, I don't know, but as far as the look and feel of it, especially from a distance, it looks really nice, it handles light very well, uh, and it's really cool what they did here, because again, this is kind of like their interpretation of Destro. It's not a straight one-for-one -one version of the original figure from Hasbro, it's their version of it. So you've got a lot more detail in it, a lot more color, a little bit more lines. It's a more modern look as well. So it's a nice upgrade. 
And of course, you have to have that classic Destro puffy collar. This is the, the pimp daddy collar for Destro. It's really nice. It's really cool. And you also do have that collar around his neck too, which still to this day confuses me how any of his head works. If someone out there knows how Destro's head and helmet thingy works, please tell me because God, I don't, I don't understand it at all. Now, one of the most noticeable flaws is unfortunately in the body and it has to do with paint. And I'm going to just nudge his necklace out of the way so you can get a better look. But unfortunately, there's like some weird schmutz going on here. That's a technical term of the toy industry, you know. There's a whole lot of red schmutz going on here in his pectoral region. I don't know what it is, but it looks to me like a lot of bleed from his red collar. It's the exact same color, so my only theory about that is some of it just rubbed off in the process, someone stuck their finger on it. And unfortunately, I don't know if that's gonna be the same across the board. I don't know if your Destro is gonna have it or someone else's Destro is gonna have that issue, but mine does, so it is something to be aware of. And again, another reason why I wish this figure had a window so you could inspect things like that before you buy them. So let's just go now into some accessories because the guy has a ton of accessories here. We got a bunch of different guns. We have 12 hands total from to go through, six for each side. We have holsters, we have a bunch of things here. I already mentioned the heads, of course, so we'll just jump into one of the real cool things that's closer to his head, and that's his ruby jewel necklace. And that is removable, by the way. All you have to do for this guy here is pop his head off, and you saw how easy that was. And the necklace comes right off, and just as easily, you can put it back on. And likewise, in fact, we'll switch heads for a little bit here. Different head just to prove how easy that goes back on. And Destro has two different gauntlets here. We have one on the right, one on the left. So the one on the left side is pretty cool because it's got a little, little bit of a computer thing going on in there. So uh, it's a nice little touch there. I will admit that looking at the box, I was expecting there to be some grenades with this toy, which there are not. And I'm surprised that they didn't really just have a little thing of grenades that he could have taken off and tossed or whatever. But having this little wrist communicator thing is also pretty cool. I kind of like that too. On the other side, we have his little mini rocket launcher. This is like an iconic piece of Destro right here. And what's cool about it is there's two versions of it. So right now what I'm holding is the neutral version, but you can easily swap it out for this piece right over here. And now you've got him launching his rockets off of his hand. That's really awesome looking. It's got this wonderful transparent plastic. So it's basically catching the missiles launching in midair. It reflects light really nicely. And it's not just like one flat color. It's a gradient of tone. It goes from clear to yellow to that bright orangey red that's at the tip with the missile. So it's a really nice gradient, very nice attention to detail in that explosion. Now, as far as guns go, Destro has a pretty fair amount. He has a sidearm in his holster currently. He's got a little pistol which comes in and out pretty easily. So it's a little tiny wee pistol over here, but it's a perfect size and it fits real nice into that holster. And speaking of, the holster is actually removable because he comes with a second holster uh, really to hold the exact same gun, but just a slightly different look for it. In his other hand here, I've got his other real big gun. I don't know what to call it. Uh, there's no name for this thing here, but just a big gun. And what's kind of cool about this big gun is that it has a removable magazine. And you can go ahead and grab that out there. And you can see that right there, removable magazine. And it comes with two additional magazines of different sizes. So this one's kind of like the medium size. But there's a smaller magazine and a longer magazine. And they all, just as easily as they come out, go right back in. And as far as his other gun, he has one more, and that's part of another accessory here. This is Destro's briefcase. Destro has a little briefcase, which is actually a little bit modular. And what's really fun about this is it has a little movable handle as well. So yes, he can actually carry this thing, and when he's not carrying it, you can just put it right back down, fold that handle in, and it's done, ready to go. But it does, in fact, open up, and once you open it up, you've got a nice looking bright Cobra logo on one side, and then over here is his modular SMG. He's got a modular submachine gun that comes disassembled. And yes, you can actually, number one, pull this part out of the briefcase. We'll explain why in a moment. But all these pieces here actually do come out of the case and you can, in fact, actually build a little submachine gun. So this piece comes out, which I didn't actually realize at first, but this comes out and can be replaced with another additional piece here. And that would be this guy right here. So we'll just pop it right back in just so I can show you how it works. Because yes, just that easily, it goes back in there, ready to go off to his lunch break. Uh, but yeah, we open it up and it's got an explosive device hiding inside it. And what's fun about this is it has a battery compartment with two very wee tiny batteries, which by the way, the instructions don't really tell you how to put them in there, but just so you know, positive side up. And once you get the batteries in there and close it back up, it has a nice on and off switch. And once you turn it on, you can press one of the buttons and it lights it up. So you've got really bright green and red color in there. It's very vivid, looks really nice. None of these pieces actually come out, by the way, in case you're wondering, they're all kind of stuck in there. That's because they're there for the light purpose, but they look really great. It's really so bright. You guys got to see it in person and really appreciate how it looks. But likewise, it closes back up, put it back in the briefcase, and he's ready to go to work. 
So as far as guns go, I feel like he might be a little bit light, but it's still a pretty decent amount. Uh, it, to be fair, Destro isn't like the guy out there really doing a lot of the heavy combat. He is the arms dealer. But one thing I kind of do wish was there, aside from the grenades I already mentioned, I wouldn't have minded one or two grenades, because why the heck not? The fact is, all these guns have barrels with kind of like an open hole in them. And that's done for realism effects. They want to have these things look a little more like actual guns. But seeing that really makes me say, why aren't there any burst effects to go with them? You know, we have this burst effect right here with the missile launcher, so you've got some nice flames coming over there, but why aren't there any like bullet effects like you get with a G.I. Joe classified figure for this Mezco figure? Seems like a real missed opportunity, and I think they've done it in the past with other figures, so I don't know why it wasn't added to this one as well. Beyond that, Dester also comes with a base, and that is our Cobra logo base right here, and it also includes the action stand. So unfortunately, this guy's a little stiff. It's always a little stiff. It's always a little hard to get this peg out here, but there's a little peg here. This peg is where you would put our Destro. Not that he's really needed it, because as you've seen in this entire review, he's been standing up just fine on his own, but you'd have him here on the base just like that. But if you wanted to have him in a more dynamic pose, you would pop out this wee little peg that's hiding right over here, and you'd install the action display stand instead. And uh, we've tried this in the past also. It tends to be pretty sturdy, which is nice about it, because uh, it's all also screws here. It's got lots of screws. That's how you're going to really, ideally, you want to untighten it and tighten it back up. Um, but it's got a good range of motion, fairly flexible, and... The plan would be to get this thing wrapped around him so you could have him jump kicking and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. And in theory, it should be able to hold him up there. Now, Destro is not really necessarily the guy that's going to be jumping around like, say, Storm Shadow or Snake Eyes, but Mezco figures are always in but a Mezco figure would be incomplete without that action display stand. So it's always a welcome addition to have. And also, like other Mezco figures, it comes with a very nice little plastic baggie to put all your accessories away when you're done with it if you're someone that doesn't want to deal with all the plastic trays because this thing has, like, I think three plastic trays full of these various accessories to contend with. And honestly, having a nice little plastic baggie makes my life a lot easier. So compared to, like, let's say that Mezco 1989 Batman figure that I really didn't like, this one is just heads above that one. This, to me, is a lot more what I want out of a Mezco 112 figure. The wardrobe, the heads, the accessories, and they're very cool, unique accessories at that too. It's, it's excellent here. Now, I am someone that does collect G.I. Joe Classified fairly casually, and if I was to say like which one I prefer over the other, tough question, because they are completely different price points also. Uh, Destro was one of the very first G.I. Joe Classified figures that came out, and I like that one a lot. To compare the two, it's again very difficult to do because of the price point, because of what they're all coming with. It kind of depends on what look you prefer to have with your toys. And I think the biggest thing that sets them apart is the fabric wardrobe. So if you're okay and you like this style of fabric here, then definitely go for the Mezco. If you prefer your toys though to be a little bit more plastic heavy, then stick with the G.I. Joe Classified. But overall, if you are someone who likes this look and likes this feel of Mezco and how they do their things, and yeah, this is another really excellent standout figure for their 112 series. Overall, really, I didn't have too many complaints other than some things I would have liked to have seen. And likewise, one thing I didn't really talk about is articulation. And uh, I will say, you know, generally speaking, their articulation is very good. Again, comparing it to that Mezco Batman, that was hot garbage. But this Destro here, it's a lot more accurate to how one of these 112 figures should look. And that's great. They have excellent range of motion all across them, every angle. Really no hindrances here. And that's one of the real great things about these figures. I mean, you can get them in some really, truly dynamic poses. He holds his guns with no problems. I mean, I've got them right now already without even trying. Like, I can actually get him into a pretty decent pose here for just taking some, like, nice action shots of him, you know, holding some weapons or going, doing various things. It's so easy to play with him, and honestly, it's a lot of fun doing it. I I'm pretty distracted right now just manipulating him in my hand. So if I'm having this much fun just doing this mindlessly, you're going to have a ton of fun taking photos with him. Now, if you want to pick up this 112 Destro for yourself, <laughs> good luck. You're not going to get him anywhere. He's been sold out for months, if not years, maybe. It's been a long time since this guy was up for pre-order. So, yeah, good luck finding him. You're going to have to basically find him on the secondary market. And uh, is he worth it is the question. I would say, really, with any of these toys, don't pay scalper prices. That's just a general rule. Don't pay scalper prices. Find yourself a good deal. Be patient, because you can get good deals out there still for things like this. But overall, really nothing too horrible to say about this guy. Very positive experience, excellent toy across the board, and I'm digging these G.I. Joe figures. There's a lot more potential for this line, and they've already put out a few other figures as well, and announced a few more too. So definitely one to keep your eye on, and also keep your wallet open for. So that's our look at Mezco Toys' 112 Destro figure from their G.I. Joe series. Really can't say enough good things about it. So until next time, I'm Matthew. This has been Nerd News Today. Thanks for watching, and we will see you guys next time. I don't know what pose I put Destro in, but... It looks like he's just skipping with the most scary, frightening face. Like, this is not something you want to look behind you and see coming at you.